A cross-court net shot can be a great weapon to use in your game, but it's quite hard to master, which is probably why so many of you have requested this tutorial. Yeah, so in this video, we're gonna teach you how to master it, including when to play it and also the right techniques, because there is more than one. So let's get straight into it. Okay, firstly, it's important to understand why you need to learn this shot and when you should actually play it. Well, the cross-court net shot is used for two reasons. One, to make your opponents move around the court and two, to make them change direction at the last second to put them under a lot more pressure. As you can see from Kento Momota's directional split step here, he was anticipating a straight net shot or cross-court lift, but Victor played a cross-court net shot, forcing Kento to change direction and take it much later as a result. Yeah, that's a good example of a situation when you should use this shot, but you shouldn't overuse it. Going back to the Victor and Kento example, Victor had already hit 16 straight lifts or net shots and eight cross-court lifts from this position in the match, but only two cross-court net shots, which is why it was much more effective. Even if you think you've got the world's best cross-court net shot, if you use it every time, it's not going to be as effective and it's not going to help you achieve those two reasons Jenny just mentioned. Now, unlike a smash where you shouldn't hit it if you're not in a good position, the great thing about this cross-court net shot is that you can actually use it if you're taking the shuttle up here or down here. So let's move on to the technique of how to play this most common cross-court net shot, starting with your preparation. Our first step might be the most important thing we say in this whole video, and this is that your preparation needs to look the same as all of your other shots, whether that's a straight or cross-court lift or straight net shot or push. If you look at these two photos, it's pretty obvious which one's going to be a cross-court net shot, right? But they actually both are. However, in this example, Jenny could have also played a shot to any other area of the court. Now, there are situations where you don't have to make it look the same. But in these situations, you would generally use a different type of cross-court net shot, which we'll cover later in the video. So let's break down the forehand preparation first. As you approach the shuttle, you should be in a loose forehand grip. And we're emphasizing the word loose because if you're gripping the racket really tightly, then you won't be able to get the control you need and your shot will end up being either way too hard or too high over the net. And as you should with your other shots from this position, you should have your racket arm extended with a slight bend at your elbow and your non-racket arm behind you for balance. Okay, let's move on to the backhand preparation. And we have one big difference in the way you prepare here. For backhand lifts or net shots, you should be in a backhand grip. But for the cross-court net, you need to start in this backhand grip and then actually slightly change to a bevel grip as you turn the racket. And because of this, it's even more important to have a loose grip. And we'll discuss this more in the hitting technique section. Now, similar to the forehand, you also want to have your racket arm extended with a slight bend and your non-racket arm behind you. Okay, so you're in the right position on the forehand and backhand side. But how do you actually play the cross-court net shot? Well, this is the hardest part to master, so let's break it down step by step. We're now back on the forehand side where you should be in roughly this position. Firstly, you need to pull your elbow back and down towards your body. Now I'm left-handed, but we'll put a right-handed example on the screen now for you as well. Now you need to do this because it improves the control of your shot and it also adds a little bit of deception. If you don't pull your elbow back, then you could still hit it cross, but not with the same precision and control. Secondly, as you're finishing this pullback, you rotate your forearm and turn the palm of your hand so that it's now facing cross court. Then you push the shuttle over. It's simple when you break it down, right? Yes, but there's two common mistakes people often make. And the first is doing the wrong type of forearm rotation. There are two ways of rotating your forearm. Like this, where you're also doing some internal shoulder rotation. And like this, where you're not. And we want to use this second rotation as this allows us to use the wrist and fingers in the shot. Again, creating the control. And the second mistake is trying to use your wrist too much. Trying to use your wrist to turn the shuttle cross court means you lose a lot of control over your shot. And if you make a lot of mistakes on your cross net, this might be why. Your wrist should always be parallel with the palm of your hand. A final point in this section is that the technique is pretty much identical, no matter if you're playing a cross net from out wide like this to quite close into your body like this, or from an early position to slightly later position like this. Now, the backhand cross-court net is a little bit more complicated than the forehand. Again, you should be in this starting position. And from here, there are four quick steps. Similar to the forehand, you should pull your elbow back and down. And as you pull your elbow back, you actually need to slightly move your thumb onto this ridge, so into a bevel grip. And this begins to rotate your racket head. If you don't change to a bevel grip, then this is what would happen. 
Next, just before you strike the shuttle, you should bend your wrist slightly like this. This is important as it enables you to get the shuttle traveling tightly across the net. Then finally, you push the shuttle over. Before we move on, we have two key points for both the backhand and the forehand shots. Firstly, if you're closer to the net, you'll have to angle your racket face towards you more as the angle is more acute. Whereas if you're further back, like the service line, then you might not need to turn your racket face quite as much. This is where you'll need to experiment in practice so that when it does come to a match, you can quickly judge what angle your racket face should be. And secondly, you need to keep your body controlled as you hit these net shots. The ability to turn the shuttle cross court comes from your arm and your racket face. You don't need to turn your whole body cross court. Okay, so in addition to the cross net we've just taught you, there are actually two more different types which we'll quickly talk about. Firstly, if you're really late, and we mean really late, then you obviously don't have the time to pull your elbow back. As you're often under a lot of pressure and reaching for the shuttle, you strike this with a straight arm and you almost entirely use your wrist to turn the shuttle cross. This shot is very advanced as it requires a lot of skill but it can be a great shot to pull off if your opponent thinks you can only lift it from this position. And the second type is the fast cross net. And this is often used when you're moving at full speed. And it's like you've either thought about killing it, but you're not in quite a good enough position. So you still take it early, but quickly turn your forearm and wrist to hit the shuttle cross. Or you've seen a big gap, so you don't need your preparation to look identical. And this is more common in doubles. For both of these shots, it often doesn't even need to be a tight cross net because you've either moved forwards with aggressive speed and intention or because there's just a big gap on the cross court. Yeah, so many people make mistakes trying to play their cross court net shots too tight. So remind yourself that they don't always need to be like you imagined them in your dreams. And actually, nine out of 10 with good quality is better than five out of 10 with amazing quality, but the other five going in the net or out. So, as we've said previously in our shot tutorials, there's not much point learning the technique if you're never going to practice it or try it in a match. So, we have two different levels of practices for you. Level one is to do static shot practice, and this is a great choice if you're completely new to the cross-court net shots. For this, you should get someone to throw shuttles over the net, and putting everything together that we've taught you, you hopefully hit some great cross nets. And don't forget to play the occasional straight net shot or lift to continually remind yourself of the same preparation. A progression in this level is for the feeder to throw underarm, overarm and at varying paces and positions. And this is so that you can practice a variety of situations and experiment with where your racket should be. Level two is to practice in a patterned routine and we're going to give you both a singles and doubles example. So for singles, the feeder lifts to you, you play a drop shot, then they play a push or net shot and you come in and turn this cross court. And a doubles example could be where you serve they play a straight net shot and you play your cross net. Now, if it turns out your opponent has watched this video and plays a good cross net that you need to dive to to get back, then we're doing a video on this next week. So make sure you've smashed the subscribe button and turn the notification bell on so you don't miss that. Or if you're watching this more than a week after we've released this video, then it'll be here for you. And that's it for this video. We hope it was insightful and we'll see you on another one very soon. Bye.